Hi Grade 8s! This is our second video about the compound light microscope and today we're going to focus on details you need to know before using this type of microscope. When using a microscope to look at a specimen, the image we see makes the specimen look much larger than it actually is. I mean, that's the whole point of using a microscope, isn't it? But as scientists, we always want to have an accurate view of the world, so it's helpful for us to know how much a specimen has been magnified. If we know that, we can get a sense of how big the specimen actually is in real life. So how do we know how much a specimen has been magnified? Well, lucky us, it turns out that figuring out the level of magnification is really easy to do. To calculate the magnification, you just need to know the magnifying power of your ocular lens and the objective lens that you're using. So the total magnification is always equal to the magnifying power of the ocular lens multiplied by the magnifying power of the objective lens that you're using. To summarize how we would calculate the total magnification when using a compound light microscope, we can use a table like this one. Here we have one column showing the magnification of the ocular lens, a second column showing the magnification level of the objective lens, and a final column showing the total magnification for the microscope. Now, the ocular lens or eyepiece always has a magnification of 10 times, no matter what objective lens you're using. So we can fill that in for all three rows right now. The magnification of the objective lens does depend, however, on what lens you're using. In our lab, the lowest powered lens magnifies the specimen by four times. The medium powered lens magnifies by 10 times and the highest powered lens magnifies by 40 times. So now to calculate the total magnification, you just need to do a bit of simple multiplication. When using the lowest power objective lens, the total magnification is the magnification of the ocular lens, which is 10 times, multiplied by the magnification of the objective lens, which is four times. So the total magnification is 40 times. In other words, the specimen looks 40 times bigger than it actually is. Following the same pattern, when you use the medium power objective lens, the total magnification is 10 times 10 for a total magnification of 100 times. This means that the specimen looks 100 times bigger than it is in real life. And finally, when using the highest power objective lens, the total magnification is 10 times 40 or 400 times, so that any specimen that you view with this magnification looks 400 times larger than it actually is. A couple of other terms you need to understand before using a compound light microscope are the terms field and field diameter. The field is the space or area you see when you look through the ocular lens of a microscope. It looks like a big lit up circle. Your specimen, or the object you're looking at, should be somewhere in this circular area. Since the field is a circle, the field diameter is just the distance across the field at its widest point. Just imagine a straight line running right through the center point of the field from one side to the other. And since the field is a circle, the orientation of the line doesn't matter. As long as the line passes through the center of the circle, the length of the field diameter will be the same. Because we are dealing with such small distances when we talk about field diameters, the field diameter is often measured in micrometers. Now, most of you will never have measured in micrometers before. The symbol for micrometers starts with what looks like a fancy U with a tail hanging down at the front. That's the Greek letter mu and ends with M, just like we're used to seeing for metric units. How small is a micrometer? 
Well, one micrometer is equal to one one thousandth of a millimeter. So just imagine chopping a millimeter up into a thousand equal slices and taking one of those slices. Another way of putting it is saying that one millimeter is equal to a thousand micrometers. Is there an easy way that we can figure out field diameter? Well, it turns out that there is a relationship between the total magnification and the size of your field diameter. Specifically, as your total magnification goes up, the field diameter goes down. And this makes sense if you think about it. Let's pretend that this white circle on the screen is the field and that you're looking at this green specimen. When your magnification goes up, every point of space in the field appears larger in the image that you see through the microscope. In other words, every point of space takes up more room. That's why your specimen looks larger. As a result, however, you're actually looking at less space in the real world. So how do you know the size of the field diameter for the magnification that you're using? Well, it turns out it's very predictable. Take the microscopes in our lab. With the lowest total magnification of 40 times, they have a field diameter of about 2.5 millimeters or 2,500 micrometers. Now, say you want to change your objective lens and increase your magnification. So you want to go from a total magnification of 40 times to a total magnification of 100 times. Well, to do that, you're multiplying your magnification by a factor of 2.5. In contrast, the field diameter is divided by the same factor 2.5. So it goes from 2,500 to 1,000 micrometers. In the same way, if you change your objective lens again and go from a medium total magnification of 100 times to the highest possible total magnification of 400 times, you're multiplying your magnification by a factor of four. This means that the field diameter is divided by the same factor, so it's divided by four, giving you a field diameter of 250 micrometers. Now, I know at this point, many of you are wondering, why do we even need to know about field diameter? Well, it turns out that knowing your field diameter can be quite useful. Imagine, for example, that you're looking through the ocular lens of a compound light microscope, and you see this particular specimen. Remember, this image has been enlarged, so what you're seeing looks much larger than the specimen actually is in the real world. Well, knowing the field diameter helps us out because it helps us estimate the actual size of our specimen in the real world. Now, one last thing to remember when using a compound light microscope. Because of the way the light passes through the different lenses, the final image of the specimen that you see is actually upside down and backwards compared to the specimen in real life.